Holy cow, it's getting real and Des Bryant time. Uh, you know the best part? Welcome to Studio Day Heffery. You know the best part about Studio Day Heffery? Is you can broadcast without pants. I don't know if you guys have ever thought about this, but every video you've ever seen me do, I'm not wearing pants. Don't have to. Can't see my lower body. It's great. Uh, okay, so today... Man, I got like 20 questions from you guys in the comments, which I always appreciate, and that gives me an easy way to do the next day's video, so keep them coming. Tell me what you want to talk about tomorrow in the comments. Subscribe to the YouTube page. Check 1053thefan.com every day. Thank you. Uh, I guess we have to start talking to Des Bryant, since Des has now actually reached out to Stephen Jones and texted him and told him, hey, man, I want to come back, and I want it to happen. I dream of it happening. I haven't had an actual dream of it happening. But I want it to happen enough that it could be considered a dream. Because to me, life is better when Des Bryant's scoring touchdowns in the NFL. And so I want it to happen. But I will not move away from my highly skeptical, um, you're in your 30s now, multiple years out of the NFL. That's hard. Achilles injury for a guy who needed every bit of athleticism he had to play football the way that he played football. Uh, I think it's I think it's really tough, and that's without even acknowledging. I will say this about Des: if you watch him, I don't know Des Bryant, but if you watch him on social media, he appears to be the best place he's ever been with life, and I think that is awesome. That's awesome. But I just don't know about. I don't know if he has the ability. I'm, I'm skeptical that he has the ability. And I did get a text during the show yesterday from the 469. He knows who he is. He texts in a lot. A lot of times he's a jerk. But the idea that you could just use less tight ends and find a role somewhere for Des Bryant in 10 personnel, you have one running back uh, and you have one tight end. And hold on, let me do my math. Five linemen and the quarterback is six. Running back is seven, and then four wide. Yeah, that's 10 personnel, idiot. Golly, I should restart the video. What an idiot. Yeah, you have a running back, four wide. Des couldn't be one of the slots. Maybe. There's a challenge there. Fourth and fifth wide receivers, they play special teams. They run down on the kickoff team. They're on the punt return team. Uh, Maybe you're a gunner on the punt team. You'd have to be a special teamer. If you're not a top three wide receiver, that's just the way it goes. And I don't know if that's does. And I don't know once you actually get on a football field, could you really be a part-time player in practice? Could you really be a guy that's like, oh yeah, I'm the fourth, fifth wide receiver and I'm happy with that. When you've been dominant and you've been the number one your entire life, I don't know how that plays out. I don't know if he's tough to coach. I don't know, Uh, but it's real now with him texting Stephen Jones and saying, hey, man, I want to come back, and I'm totally down for the invite at the very least, where you say, yeah, come to camp. You're invited. Here's your league minimum contract. Um, Here's some incentives if you want to make more money than that, and let's see. Let's see if you can make the team. He's looking better. Looks like he's lost weight because I'd heard uh, on his New Orleans situation that he wasn't exactly in football shape, and that may have contributed. But I pull for him. I hope, Des. I hope. I think it would be awesome. It would be a great story, and I'd love to see Des Bryant scoring touchdowns again. But keep me chalked up in the category that says, I don't think that he'll have another NFL catch. I hope he does. I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong. Don't call me a hater. I want to be wrong. I want Des to be a cowboy, make the team, and still be able to contribute. That would be awesome. All right. What else did I put that I wanted to talk about today? Uh, Mailbag. All the things that people have asked about, and I'll just rattle through. Matt S. says, hey, Jeff, is there a possibility the Cowboys draft Jalen Hurts as an insurance option? I don't think I've talked about Jalen Hurts on a video. Now, I watched, I think I watched every OU game this year. So I've seen him play a ton. I have not studied him, but I'll tell you my initial impressions on Jalen Hurts. My initial impressions are, I wish he threw the ball a little bit better, and I wish that he processed what's happening in coverage a little bit better. And so I think, Stomp, it cannot be a tradition that you lose a ball underneath the bookshelf every time I'm doing a video. Every time. I'll be right back. Stomp, you want the ball? Finish the ball. No problem. 
I got you, buddy. I'm all over it. Look, it's not even under this right here. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? It's not even. Oh, there it is. There it is. I found it. There it is. Don't worry, everybody. I found it. I got it. I got it. No problem. Sorry about that. Although maybe for some of you it's entertaining that I have to, with my terrible knee, get out of this chair to go up under a bookshelf for a ball. She's got 12 balls in the house, but she puts one under the bookshelf, and it's a tragedy, and it's an emergency, and she can't just grab another one. Get the ball, get the ball. Uh, Yeah, so Jalen Hurts, I'm guessing he'll be a guy that gets picked in the third round, somewhere around there, maybe even the fourth. Maybe somebody goes early, I don't know. But I actually don't mind him as a Dak Prescott backup, because you know what I think he's going to have in common with Dak is I think he's going to score off the charts on the intangibles, on the work ethic. Uh, I think great teammate, leader, all these different things. And maybe he's a guy that can develop into a guy who's capable of starting in the NFL. Uh, I don't think he is right now. But, yeah, I think that's a fun backup where it's a guy that it's like, oh, you know, he could he can run a little bit. Uh, he's a decent athlete. I, I think people may overrate his athleticism and think that, oh, he can just woo, 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 run all over the place. Like they were really, he was more of a power runner at OU. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't mind him. If the Cowboys could get like a fourth round pick and use it on Jalen Hurts, I don't mind that as a guy to try to develop and put behind Dak Prescott. Don't mind it at all, Matt. Gus Garza. What position at a wide receiver, defensive tackle, cornerback, or safety? Are the Cowboys most likely to skip in the draft and look for a cheap guy in free agency? Wide receiver makes sense to draft one no matter what they do. Let's say you bring back Amari Cooper, whether it's long-term or on a tag. You bring back Randall Cobb, and your starting receiver group is set. I still think it's a good year in the fourth or fifth round to fire off a pick on a wide receiver for a guy that could be maybe your fourth receiver immediately and develops into a potential starter. So I think you pick a wide receiver no matter what. Uh, Defensive tackle, I've gone over the list here before. There's a group of 20 dudes that are unrestricted free agents that you could take and upgrade the Cowboys. So I think they're absolutely going to jump in that pool and get at least one of those guys at defensive tackle. So I could see them skipping the draft there and grabbing a starter in free agency. Corner's tough. Because two of the guys you would want back are guys that the Cowboys are probably going to let walk. Byron Jones and Anthony Brown. If you don't want, if you're not interested in them, why are you interested in cutting a check comparable to what either of them would get for somebody else's guys? I don't understand that. But they do have uh, holes to fill at the moment. With Byron as a free agent, really all you have is your practice squad guys, your inactive guys, and Cheeto and Jordan Lewis. So I think they'll have to do something in free agency with corner. But if Byron's not back, I think, not that you have to, but that they'll feel like they almost have to pick a corner in the first two or three rounds at the latest. Safety, it's a new coaching staff, so we don't know if their approach will be the same. But safety is another one that I think we'll hear before the draft that they're going to sign at least one guy that is borderline starter level, Uh, just so that they feel okay, where you can skip safety if your board tells you to. So the most likely to fill in free agency and avoid in the draft, I think are defensive tackle and safety, which is kind of what they've been doing for a long time. But I could see that being the same just because the defensive uh, tackle group in free agency is really good. And at safety, I think they'll feel like we can find a guy to fill the roster and not feel pressured that we have to do something. Uh, Kayvon... Who on the Cowboys is a target for a restructured contract to free up more cap space? I think that's obviously Tyrone Crawford, although they missed him last year. Uh, Ultimately, he's probably overpaid for what he brings on the field, but the leadership, um, he's a leader of that defensive line room. So I think you'd like to have him on the team. He's probably your best starting strong side end right now. If you keep, well, right side, I guess, if DeMarcus Lawrence is going to stay on the left. But I like having him on the team. But, yeah, you've got some serious money available if you wanted to do something with Tyrone Crawford. 
Matthew White, Jeff, if Kinlaw was there at 13 or 14, would you give up a future first or second rounder? If you could give a third and a late, would you do it? Oh, that's tempting. Oh, that's tempting. They need a lot. They have a ton of free agents, and they have a ton of roster spots that they're going to have to fill. But I think Javon Kinlaw is a star. I think he's a monster. we got to keep an eye on his knees in the medicals leading up to the draft. Uh, if you told me I could give up, oh, I need to move up two spots. So I flip and go to 14. I give up my first rounder, and I could give up a future two? Is that too much? How about a future three? kind of need my picks this year but if it's a future pick it would probably have to be a two because future picks are worth less than current picks i'd be tempted because i think javon kinlaw is an impact difference maker on sundays so i would certainly be tempted from rudy jeffrey time who is the better defensive end coming out aj epinesa or taco charlton his rookie season that's a little unfair and i know you're all shaking your heads it's a little unfair because we've already seen what taco has done in the nfl which is going to jade it but I got A.J. Epinesa graded as a 1-2, somebody that you can pick in the back half of round one and say, okay, got him at the right spot. And Taco Charlton, I think I had graded at the end of two or a 2-3. So is a better prospect. He's got more consistent, better production. He plays with better power and technique. He's a better prospect than Taco Charlton. Faux show. Um, Joshua Fitzpatrick is commenting on me trying to quit dipping. There's my patch. Got my patch on. Just suck it up and accept the first two or three weeks of cold turkey are going to suck for you and occasionally the people around you. You'll get urges. They'll decrease as you go. But it'll be year two or three before they're infrequent. (sighs) (sighs) I don't like that. Jason White, what should be the interest level in Greg Olson? For me, zero. I think he can play. Let Blake Jarwin get his shine on. Let him work. Let him cook. I want the downfield threat. Olsen's still a pretty good player, but he's injury prone. He's in his mid, what is he, 34, 35. Uh, Let Blake Jarwin be the guy. Find a backup that you know is a backup and not competing for his snaps. Let Blake Jarwin get his shine on for very little money and see what happens. Uh, Let's see. We already did that one. CC, how do you rate any of these corners coming out? In the back part of the first round, early second, compared to the first-round pick DeAndre Baker from the Giants last year. Because if that's the kind of cornerback play we can expect this year, I don't want to go that route. Um, I will have Okuda as clearly better than DeAndre Baker as a prospect. Now, I, I so far, was wrong on DeAndre Baker. I had him as a end-of-the-first-round sort of guy. That's how I evaluated him. But... I do think Christian Fulton, LSU, um, C.J. Henderson, Florida, those two I would have rated higher as prospects than I did DeAndre Baker. Trayvon Diggs probably has better physical tools, but I don't know if I'd grade him better as a player right now. And then um, Jeff Gladney at TCU, I'll probably have graded around the same way, one, two. So, yeah, there's there's a group of them that I've got higher than I had uh, DeAndre Baker coming out. Let's see. AJ, doing the math, it seems like you only have 13 or 14 first-round grades, including O-line and quarterbacks. At 14, 15, if there's one first-round grade left, do you move up or risk it and take a 1-2 if the player gets picked? I That's why I think this draft is setting up potentially for a trade back. Because there's going to be four or five first-round graded offensive tackles. There's going to be two to four first-round graded quarterbacks. But at corner, at, I mean, there's going to be probably four or five first-round graded wide receivers. That's where the depth is in the first round. And I don't know how many Cowboy fans want the Cowboys to go any of those routes in the first round. So the best player on your board could easily be a wide receiver or an offensive tackle when you get to that pick. But those are also fairly premium positions. So I, I'm not writing off the idea that you could have Javon Kinlaw fall in your lap. Uh, I'm trying to think who other of my clearly first-round guys. Maybe the D-tackles have the best chance, either Derek Brown or Javon Kinlaw, because Okuda's not going to make it. Isaiah Simmons is not going to make it. Um, yeah, so there's gonna. I think they'll be in a spot where they'll have a first-round graded player. They'll have at least 
most teams will have somewhere around 20 first-round graded players. Maybe I'm just harsh on them this year. Jeff, you found Anthony Brown and Xavier Woods in the sixth round. Who's your late-round sleeper this year? That's from Tristan. I'm not there yet. I'm about 60 players in now. I'm making good progress. But I'll find the guys that I know that the league is going to be too low on. I'll find them. I'll get them for you. They'll be Cowboys. What will Connor McGovern's role in this team next year be? Was it a wasted pick last year with the contract given to Collins? No. No, no, no. no. Not wasted. Um, Connor Williams is going to have nothing given to him. Connor Williams is going to have to earn and hold that job. And I think Connor McGovern, they had Connor McGovern graded higher than Tristan Hill, even though they took them in reverse order. So they went need based and then they picked probably their best player on the board in Connor McGovern. He can play. He just had a hurt boob. You know, you hurt a boob and you can't play for a while. So hopefully he's able to get on track with his development and be a threat to be your starting left guard and give you really good depth uh, on the interior there. And we did that one. Can you find me a free agent cornerback? The free agent cornerbacks that I want are the ones that were already here. X Sanchez. What's your favorite cartoon? As a kid, I loved uh, the cartoon versions of G.I. Joe, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Heroes in a Half Shell, Turtle Power. They're the world's most fearsome fighting team. Uh, I really liked Ninja Turtles. Um, G.I. Joe, Ninja Turtles, and X-Men. I was way in on the X-Men, the, uh, the cartoon version. Uh, yeah, because I wasn't really in on, like, once you got to the stuff where other people were watching, like, Doug or Rugrats. I was more about Saved by the Bell and Family Matters and Fresh Prince and Martin at that point. So, yeah, those ones. Ryan, good morning, Jeff. Good morning. What are your thoughts about the Tank Zeke contracts one year later? I think the tank contract, you could have got a better deal, but the Cowboys made him prove it for an extra year, which, by the way, they're in danger of doing that with Dak right now. We're going to keep stringing it out and like, oh, they don't want to do the deal that we want to do, so we'll just tag them and wait it out. And by the time you wait it out, what do you think, Dak's going to fall on his face? No, he's going to play well again, and the number's going to keep going up. That happened to him with Tank, and I know people are disappointed with a five-sack season, but Tank played really well. He didn't rush the passer quite as well as he has the last two years, but the total number of pressures and the way he played the run, that's a highly compensated defensive end. If you want to argue, it should be $3 million less. All right, that's fine. But he deserves to be a highly compensated edge player, and he is, and he had a good year. The Zeke contract, you guys know. You know how I feel. Don't pay running backs. They're trying to get out of the Gurley deal. They're trying to get out of the David Johnson deal. Le'Veon Bell's getting three yards of carry. Once guys get paid, they're – your best years are usually already behind you, almost always. I don't think there's ever been a running back who's been better in any year other than his first five later in his career. So that combined with the fact that Sonny Michelle suddenly can't get four yards of carry. He's a first-round pick. He's young. He should be able to be great, right? He's awesome. Doesn't matter. Your surroundings dictate your success. Tom Brady in the offense couldn't throw it as well, couldn't use the outside or down the field as much, and suddenly the box got tight. And Sony Michel gets under four yards of carry. Running back's a dependent position that ages quickly and gets injured. So you should never give a second contract to a running back. Never. Unless Christian McCaffrey's somewhat affordable. Because if you can play receiver legitimately, there's some value there. But yeah, running back deals are bad. That's just the way it is. All right, fellas. Catch me on the radio. I'm going to do some yoga, I think. After, yeah, I'll do some yoga and then put some pants on. Wish me luck with the tobacco thing. And remember to leave your comments for what you want to talk about tomorrow. And um, make sure you're subscribed and have the notifications on so you don't miss a video, okay? I love you guys. Check 1053thefan.com every day, and I'll see you on the radio.